How do you guys feel about sing-alongs? Hey, 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 hey. She's the impossible girl, the impossible girl. Hey, 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 hey. She's the impossible girl, the impossible girl. I'm Kim Bookbinder. I know all about failure because I've called myself the impossible girl. And last year, I had to reinvent touring. See, so I was on this tour of the US, and I was playing in Portland, Oregon. The venue had a capacity of about two to 300 people. There were 18 people in the room. <laughs> Independent musicians play to empty rooms all the time. It just happens. But this was happening a lot on this tour, and the thing is that I'm actually famous. Like, most people don't know who I am, but to the people who know me, I'm a superstar. Andy Warhol said that in the future, everybody would be famous for 15 minutes. But I see that as well as this big bang of super concentrated fame for a short time, you can take that concentrate and spread it very, very thinly over a longer period of time. <laughs> so you get this micro fame. And it's not that there's lots and lots of people who think I'm kind of cool. It's that there's a few people who think I'm intergalactic. <laughs> I have thousands of fans all over the world who've been funding my albums, my short films, my videos. I make my living as a musician without any label or management, which makes me an unprecedented independent success. Which is why, thank you, it's very confusing to play to an empty room in a town that knows who I am. And it's not just confusing to me, it's confusing to the people who do show up to the people who drove 200 miles, to the girl who's been waiting four hours. She's got a tattoo of my face on her arm. It's intense. So that night, I took the $12 I earned. Luckily, it takes about $12 to get me drunk in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and I went and I thought about these disparate realities, the one where I'm a superstar with loyal fans and the ones where I'm an abject failure with no live audience. And in between these realities, there's a terrifying chasm of self-doubt. In the old days, there was a system. I would have been picked up by a label, and they would have promoted me and essentially paid for my audience. I don't live in the old days. And a label might as well be a mastodon to me, an extinct, slightly magical creature whose fat could help sustain me through the winter <laughs> or who could trample me to death. I don't even have time to worry or wonder about whether that system was better or not because I'm too busy solving my own problems. The problem is that I need to tour, but the cost of touring is debilitating. So me and the whiskey had a little talk that night. And we thought, okay, if we can crowdfund and essentially sell an album before we record it, maybe we can sell a show before we book it. Using Kickstarter, I said, I will play a show on this date somewhere in New York. I need this much money. The show got funded immediately. And then I got press all over the world because it turns out nobody has ever done this before. Suddenly, I was getting hundreds of emails a day, people calling me a genius and saying, why haven't we always been doing it this way? It was like the entire internet looked at me and then started talking about my failure. And then started talking about my success, because then I did a whole tour of the US, this time to rooms filled with excited, engaged audiences. And because I knew my audience size beforehand, I got to book appropriate venues. I didn't have to worry about how many people were gonna show up, or if I was gonna break even, I got to put on an amazing show, which is my actual job. <laughs> and to the people who came to those shows, it was amazing. So the best part of the pre-sold tour is that everybody's winning. The audience gets an amazing show, they feel totally invested, the musician gets an audience, and the venue gets an audience. And when everybody in the room is winning, that's the best feeling in the world. So it turns out that selling a show and then booking it is totally insane. And there's a reason that nobody's done it before. That's okay, it's still winning, because the problems happen before the show, which is fundamentally different than how concerts are usually booked. Because bands cancel tours all of the time because their ticket sales aren't going well enough. But they don't call it a pre-sold tour, but because of this thing we call crowdfunding, we now get to be really honest and say, hey, We've always been crowdfunded, but now we get to know our audience size, and it doesn't matter what your budget is if you know what your budget is. I'm working with a company right now. 
It's a bit of a secret. But they'll be launching a pre-sold tour website really soon, which is great news for fans and musicians. And it's great news for me because it means I get to move on to my next failure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>